This is NASA TV. Good afternoon and welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center. I'm Chelsea Bayarte, joined here by the crew members of NASA's SpaceX Crew 6 mission at their crew news conference. These individuals are launching to the International Space Station no earlier than February 26th aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon Endeavor spacecraft. And they are NASA astronaut and, and Crew 6 commander, Steve Bowen, NASA astronaut and pilot, Woody Hoberg, UAE astronaut and mission specialist, Sultan al -Niyadi and Roscosmos cosmonaut and mission specialist, Andre Fedyaev. So I know you're eager to ask them some questions. So please, if you have a question on the phone, press star one. If your question's already been asked and you'd like to retract it, please push star two. We'll also be taking questions here in the room as well as on Twitter. So if you have a question on social media, uh, please send in yours using hashtag AskNASA and we'll be on the lookout for them. But first I wanna to toss it over to Steve Bowen for some opening remarks. I just want to thank you all for uh, for attending and for being online and uh, watching us on on NASA TV. It's really exciting as a crew. It's a uh, it's uh, sort of been a long road to get here, and we're very excited and very we all feel very privileged to be a part of this mission going to the International Space Station next month. And uh, we are really looking forward to the experiences we have ahead of us. And uh, from a personal note, it's been a great honor to work with these these uh, astronauts, cosmonauts. It's, a, it's an amazing team I've been privileged to, to have with me, and uh, we are all looking forward to our flight. Awesome, thanks, Steve. Um, so we're gonna start out with some questions here in the room. Um, if you wanna start with your name and affiliation, and as well as which astronaut or cosmonaut you'd like to direct your questions to. The question uh, right here. Corot with Aviation Week and Space Technology. And I believe this is for the commander. Um, could you discuss some of the spacewalk potential activities or certain activities that you see unfolding uh, during your uh, six-month mission? Uh, actually, our mission is uh, incredibly full of uh, vehicles coming to visit us. We were just discussing uh, shortly after we get the space station, SpaceX 27 is going to arrive with a full complement of science, and uh, usually SpaceX vehicles when they get to the space station, it's 30 days of continuous work, followed by NG-19, which will uh, visit shortly thereafter and during the same time frame. Potentially, we have crew flight tests uh, coming up with the Boeing vehicle, which is, I, I think that's really going to be incredibly exciting. Uh, it's currently scheduled for sometime April-ish, uh, but uh, followed by Axiom-2 and then another SpaceX at the end. And uh, the SpaceX 28 at the uh, sort of the end of the increment is sort of our opportunity for any EVAs. So we may actually have EVAs on top of uh, three cargo vehicles and two crewed vehicles coming to visit. So uh, it's just such an exciting increment. It's, we're going to be busy. Uh, we're going to be tired, but it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so we've got a question on the phone. We'll go to Marsha Dunn with Associated Press. Hi. For... Um for uh, Steve and uh, Andre, at least, and maybe the other two would like to chime in. I'm wondering, what's your secret to working together and trusting one another with your lives, given the messy, confrontational state of affairs between your country's leaders here on Earth? Do you avoid certain political topics, not read the headlines out of Ukraine? Or if there have been tensions, how do you resolve them? Thanks so much. So uh, I'll answer that for, for, our, for my part, I guess. It's, uh, we've been, I've been working and training with cosmonauts for over 20 years now, and uh, it's always been amazing. The, once you get to space, it's just one crew, uh, one vehicle, and uh, we all have the same goal. And having the opportunity to train in Russia over the past uh, number of years, in addition in the past year, uh, you know, really focusing on the mission, that's why we're there. That's what we're there for. Um, I'll have to toss it over to Andre, but, uh, you know, it's working with our our crewmates. That's really what we do. Ну, конечно, мне тут сложно что-либо добавить. Конечно, такое довольно длительное уже сотрудничество в космосе между нашими странами. И я всегда говорил, что жизнь людей, 
космонавтов, астронавтов на станции из разных стран является ярким примером, то есть жизнь людей в космосе является ярким примером того, как люди должны жить на Земле. Ну и, я считаю, мы являемся очень хорошим примером этого. It's really hard for me to add anything here. Uh, space cooperation has a very long history, and um, we are setting the example of uh, how people should be living on Earth. Uh, the life of people in space on the International Sta uh, Space Station uh, is really setting a very good example for how people should be living on Earth. Definitely all about the mission, and that's what we're here today to talk about. Uh, we're going to go to a question in the room. Gina Sinceri, ABC. Um, who wants to talk about the patch and its significance and how it was designed? <laughs> There's a patch up there. You can talk to it. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I think when uh, we started talking about the patch, we were looking at different elements um, linked to dragons and uh, I wouldn't say that we were running out of uh, uh, options, but um, we all liked uh, ships, and historically all the uh, uh, space shuttles were uh, named after uh, vessels or uh, discovery ships, so we liked their names, uh, Endeavour, we liked the name Discovery and so on. So we thought, what about having a ship maybe in the, in the, uh, in the patch? So we looked up at uh, items that had maybe uh, uh, a dragon figurehead, and uh, we found uh, like a good, cool idea of having uh, uh, maybe a figurehead uh, ship uh, as, as the main element. And as you may know that the Dragon actually dock in, in the, like the forward of the station itself. So that uh, became the main element. Plus we had a very cool uh, like uh, addition uh, by Andre when he said, uh, let's use the, 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 the uh, Cosmonaut uh, 2012 uh, class shape, which is, uh, it, it looks like a, a, a sail, but it's actually the idea of uh, three uh, planets, or uh, I would say Earth, Moon, and, and Mars. So that actually uh, kind of uh, uh, draw a sail. So we thought, okay, a ship and a sail, that can work together. We added other elements like the Draco constellation, which is a similar name to uh, some of the engines on, on the capsule itself. And as you may say, see, actually, our names are written in the original language. So I, th I think it came as a, as a cool uh, patch after all. And one final element is the actual, the actual uh, space station. It looks like an anchor uh, to the ship, which uh, also uh, was, was presented very well in the, in the patch. So we're really happy and proud <laughs> of, of our patch. Thanks. And we have a question from here in the room, Eric. Hi, uh, Eric Berger with Ars Technica. It's a question for anyone who wants to address it. Um, you know, low Earth orbit's becoming increasingly congested. You know, the ISS is doing maneuvers. We had the MMOD strike on Soyuz MS-22 in December. And I'm just wondering, you know, if that's, you're going to be up there for a long time, six months. Um, is that something you think about, are concerned about? I'm sure you train for it, but just talk a little bit about sort of living in this environment where there is lots of debris zinging around that's potentially a threat to the place you're living. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Um, yeah, certainly uh, there's been a lot of uh, concern about this recently. Um, we're lucky to be able, we, we kind of know when the big stuff's coming. So as you know, we are able to move the space station out of the way, uh, given some heads up that there's a potential conjunction and that's something the mission control team does a great job of on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Um, we're always thinking about how to, uh, keep the station clear of incoming conjunctions and often using those opportunities to also reboost at the same time. So we need those reboosts. Um, and if we can be um, opportunistic about those, uh, it's a good opportunity. I think we just fall back on our training for um, the, the case where we do potentially have, let's say, a late conjunction and we're not able to move out of the way. Um, we have safe haven procedures. Um, and uh, we're well trained to deal with that situation. We have a question right up front here. <laughs> uh, I'm White uh, from Russian Sputnik News. Please, I have a question. Would you like to see these cross flights to continue in the future between NASA and Roscosmos? 
And uh, what are their advantages? How do you complement each other? This is very multicultural uh, crew. Uh, do, do, you, do you have some kind of concrete example? For example, one of you, you know, knows how to do better one thing, the other one, the other thing. Is there anything like that? Thank you. I think, uh, you know, I, I think we're actually pretty well balanced, well complemented crew. It, everybody seems to be able to fill in uh, the gaps wherever we have them. It's, it's just uh, an incredibly talented group of people I have the opportunity to train with. And I think the, the advantage to having a, a multicultural crew is, is fairly obvious. And uh, as far as having a, you know, a Russian cosmonaut on board, that really balances out so that you know, each of the countries will always have some presence on the International Space Station. And uh, yeah, and you all have any concrete examples of uh, where somebody's skills helped beyond? Well, actually, uh, I think uh, we all complement each other, uh, be it uh, the background that we trained from or uh, uh, the language. Actually, even when we run um, emergency procedures, we have uh, people <laughs> dealing with uh, the procedure, somebody uh, actually physically doing something. Um, Andre might uh, take the calm and talk to MCC uh, Moscow. So it's all uh, like a a group activity to complement each other and uh, achieve uh, the goal. And in our case, in case of an emergency, it's the safety of the, of the crew. So I think it, we play uh, a good team together overall. Absolutely. Thanks. Would you like to see the Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, think that's a, I think it's an advantage to all of us. And I think we might not have had a microphone on Linka. She's repeated her <laughs> question uh, if they would like to see cross flights again in the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to take one on the phone. Robert Perlman with Flex Space. Hi. Uh, a question for Steve or for any member of the crew uh, and a follow up to Gina's um, question about the patch. Um, did, did you as a crew also design the Expedition 69 patch? And if so, we heard on the last panel that it hasn't been decided yet if you're going to be a continuation of Expedition 68 or a new Expedition 69. If it turns out to be the first, um, are you okay with another crew taking on that design that you may have designed? <laughs> uh, do you want to handle it? You can get sure, take that. Yeah. Um, it's actually a somewhat funny set of circumstances. So uh, my classmate and colleague, Laurel O'Hara, who was scheduled to fly on the Soyuz launching uh, this spring, did most of the work of designing the absolutely beautiful Expedition 69 patch. Yeah. Um, and it's got some really cool elements. Um, it's based actually on a stained glass mural at the Profi in Russia um, as one of the elements. And uh, so it's, we are, as far as we know, uh, with the arrival of the upcoming Soyuz, we will be transitioning to Expedition 69. That's the latest I've heard, but um, certainly things could change. But assuming that to be the case, we would adopt that patch um, we can't take credit for it because I think Laurel <laughs> did all the work and she won't even, uh, she will likely fall, fly uh, next fall as it turns out. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, it's just a beautiful patch and she did ask she her did opinion ask her and, her opinion. and uh, so yeah. we, we absolutely love it. Yeah. So it's an honor to get to uh, be part of Expedition 69. Thank you for your question, Robert. Uh, we're going to go to Sarwa Nazir with the National on the phone. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, my question is for Sultan. Um, if you could talk about what's going to be on the menu for you on, on the space station, you know, are you going to have uh, some traditional Emirati uh, cuisines like Hazal Mansouri did back in 2019? And my second question is, um, could you talk a little bit more about the science that you'll be doing on, on the ISS? Uh, Mr. Salman previously mentioned that there would be about 15 experiments from your university. If you could just um, you know, talk about some of those. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarwat. Um, well, um, honestly, uh, it's going to be a busy schedule. And uh, uh, coming uh, to the second question, uh, it's going to be a, a busy schedule in terms of uh, science and uh, uh, doing uh, all of so sorts of uh, cool stuff. So we are subjects ourselves. We have uh, a lot of uh, uh, sensors on us when we do experiments. They log our sleep. They log our uh, uh, vascular activities, uh, breathing, and so on. So uh, that is one part of the medical experiments, I would say. We have a range of other uh, experiments like uh, material science and bioscience. So as Steve mentioned, the, the 
the overall uh, six months is going to be really busy, uh, yet we will have to stick with uh, uh, very solid science that will come back uh, and share with humanity. And in terms of food, uh, I think I'll leave it to the uh, other press conference that hopefully will be done in Dubai soon. But um, I think it's going to be uh, reflected towards uh, uh, food that is coming from, uh, from the UAE. You'll share. We, we will share, definitely, yeah. 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 Okay. We'll, we'll do that. We'll make sure we do that. <laughs> okay, thank you for your question. That was great. Uh, we're going to go on the phone again to David Denault with About Space Today. This is for Cosmonaut uh, Andre. You probably have trained in a Soyuz capsule. Now you're going to fly in a Dragon capsule. How do you describe the compartment at a Soyuz and the luxury, so to speak, of the dragon. Хороший uh, вопрос, конечно. Good question. Yeah. Uh, ну, на самом деле, uh, принципиально нельзя сравнивать этих два корабля, uh, потому что это совершенно две разные эпохи, ведь между ними практически 50-60 лет стоит между созданием этих двух кораблей. It's a really good question, and just in principle, you cannot compare these two vehicles because there are 50 or 60 years uh, between when they were designed. Ну вот конкретно для человека, который задает этот вопрос, я хочу ответить другим вопросом. But just specifically for the person who asked this question, I want to uh, answer by asking a different question. Вот что бы вы выбрали? Uh, например, между двух вариантов. У вас первый вариант – это uh, большая однокомнатная студия, квартира, где вы можете жить, либо небольшая двухкомнатная. If you had to choose between one uh, large studio, like one uh, bedroom studio, and uh, two small, smaller rooms, my answer, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good description. <laughs> Thank you. So if you're just joining us, we are taking questions with the Crew 6 crew. Um, if you are on our phone bridge today, please put, press star 1 to ask a question, and we'll call on you. Or if you have a question on social media, head over to Twitter and push hashtag AskNASA, and we'll be looking out for your questions as well. I'm going to take one from social media right now. Um, I think this one can be for Steve. Um, what are you going to be doing in space, and how long are you going to be there for? This question <laughs> is from Yankee Pilgrim on Twitter. Uh, well, what are we going to be doing in space? So we have a, a six-month mission. I think it's currently scheduled about 182 days. Uh, I outlined the number of people that are going to be visiting us, the number of vehicles that will be visiting us. We've got hundreds of experiments that will be uh, assisting along the way. Um, for me, this is the first time I have the opportunity to spend more than a couple weeks on Space Station, so I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to, to live on board Space Station. Uh, I've been kind of joking, you know, it's like uh, as a contractor, when you build a house, uh, you know, it's really cool, you get to see how things come together, but most of the time you never get to live there. Well, I get to go live in the house I helped build, and that, that's going to be really exciting for me. Uh, I really look, up, look forward to the opportunity of spending the time with this, this crew. I mean, this is going to be great. So what do you guys, what do you want, Woody? I mean, I, I often like, I like to think of it kind of as follows. As Steve said, we're going to be living in space for six months. So I think back to six months ago and think, okay, that's a long time. <laughs> so we certainly have to take care of ourselves. That means sleeping, eating, exercising quite a bit. When we are not doing those things, we are working. And our work on the space station I kind of think of it as two different things. So first, the purpose of the space station, it's a national lab and it's for scientific research. So we have this incredible, unique, weightless environment where we can conduct amazing scientific research and that's why we go to the ISS. And then, so that's maybe half of the time we spend is on that scientific research and then the other half is on keeping that beautiful space station flying. So that means doing maintenance, repairs, potentially going outside and doing spacewalks to upgrade things, um, but just Keeping, uh, keeping the space station uh, healthy. Personally, what are you looking forward to? It's got to be something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to get my hopes up about possibly getting to oh, do an EVA, can... but that's certainly <laughs> on the list. But I think uh, just when we arrive, um, I'm looking forward to looking out the window. Right. Yeah. 
Well, I, I totally share the same uh, ideas and looking forward to work as a team. And uh, as Woody mentioned, we will be living there. So just uh, the idea of waking up every morning and having the access to a window like the cupola, I think it's literally out of this world. I mean, you can see and scan the whole world in, in 90 minutes, which is amazing. So that is probably the, the one thing that I want to see uh, in person. But obviously, doing all the, uh, uh, the tasks that we train to do, actually doing science, uh, doing all the repairs, and uh, uh, actually uh, communicate the activities that we do on board with students, and uh, just spreading the enthusiasm about the space station and traveling to space overall. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's. <laughs> nice. Usually his answer is so much better than the rest of yeah. <laughs> So we're going to be switching over to a couple of questions on the phone branch. We've got Bill Hardwood with CBS. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, a question for Andre, if I could. Um, have you spoken to Anna Kakina about her experience uh, with Crew Dragon? Does she have any advice or uh, maybe give you any idea of what to expect? Thanks. Ну, безусловно, мы некоторой информацией обмен, обменивались, вот, но в целом она настолько занята на станции сейчас, что ну, нам не очень часто приходится с ней общаться. Yes, definitely. We did have some information exchange with her, but right now she is so busy on the International Space Station that we didn't really have uh, very much time to communicate. Okay, we'll go to... David Curley with the Discovery Channel on the phone. David, are you with couple us? questions for Steve. Thank you. For, I'm here. Sorry about that. Steve, a couple of questions. Two big events uh, happening. Well, more than two big events, but two that I'd like to ask you about. Uh, style, Starliner's uh, potential arrival how important is that for the program to have that second vehicle that it could become operational and certified? And secondly, uh, Axiom One, uh, there were uh, some issues that uh, management talked about uh, working on. How comfortable are you with the changes in having uh, visitors uh, join you on station? Thank you. So the. Yeah, you know, the opportunity for Starline to visit. I mean, it's uh, it's an incredible opportunity. When you think about the fact that we'll have two companies able to provide uh, the opportunity to reach low Earth orbit is it's just amazing. So we're really looking forward to that. That'll be uh, an incredibly, uh, you know, sort of I hate to use the word game changer, but it'll change the way we look at how we fly to space. You know, having one company that's been sort of very directly supported and uh, by the government, but having two, that's a different uh, that's a different opportunity and that's a it's a great opportunity looking forward. Uh, a few years ago, you know, this was not even a possibility and it's just amazing. We're gonna hopefully get to that get to that point on our flight. Uh, for Axiom two, we've had the opportunity to, to talk to Peggy and John uh, the crew members on Axiom 2, and uh, we think that it's going to be a great opportunity, a great flight uh, when they get to visit. Uh, they'll be up there for about a week or so, and uh, they have a great plan uh, for their mission, and uh, we'll do what we can to support them. And uh, it's going to, I think it's going to work out well. It's another paradigm shift. You know, those two events, huge events actually in, in space flight happening during our increment, on top of all the other work we get to do. Uh, I don't think we're going to fully be able to absorb it until after the fact how important those two events really are. Uh, so it's going to be exciting, that's for sure. <laughs> so we'll go now to Sophie Sanchez with Cosmic Chicago. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Um, I guess this question uh, could be answered by anyone. Um, earlier in the previous broadcast, we heard our um, managers speaking about the low probability events that they plan for when it comes to things like strikes to the Soyuz. I was wondering if you guys could speak a little bit more um, to the training that you guys as astronauts um, do to prepare for these low probability events, um, especially Steve, maybe, um, if you can offer any insight into how the training has changed over the years. Thank you. So. Uh I'll let Woody take the, the difficult scientific side of this, I guess. Uh, I'll just give a couple anecdotes along the way. So, yeah, the way we've looked at, uh, you know, 
the probability of MMOD strikes in, uh, on the International Space Station. Uh, for the life of station, from when I first showed up, it's been the highest probability event for the, you know, causing loss of station. Uh, during the life of the program, it was initially estimated one in 250 or somewhere thereabout. But, you know, in a real way, I've been out doing a spacewalk and seeing, you know, holes through handrails uh, where obviously MMOD strikes have happened. On my first flight, we actually had a window on the pilot side, uh, you know, take a small MMOD strike on the outer pane. Uh, I had the weird opportunity of seeing a, a, a shooting star go below my feet during an EVA. <laughs> uh, and it was really cool until I realized that, hey, that rock was just out here with me. So, uh, you know, it's a, real, it's a real thing. And our ability to discern and uh, see what's coming has changed and evolved as our capabilities have improved through the years. As far as the training and what we have uh, to help us with that, I'll pass that over to Woody. Yeah, sure. So as, as I think many of you are well aware, um, we train for three different emergency class uh, sort of events, three different types of emergency uh, that we could uh, yeah. face on the space station. So those are fire, depress, and toxic atmosphere. Um, and then, it, you know, in addition, we have some emergency procedures like safe haven that we could end up in in the case of things like a late conjunction with a, uh, some kind of... Um, yeah, late conjunction with some kind of MMOD. Um, in terms of, you know, the training prepares us for those low probability events. We are we are ready should any of those things occur. Um, we're ready to respond. And I, I also, just thinking about that question, I think it's important to acknowledge all the work that happens on the ground, the teams that do the analysis and think about all of the different ways that bad things could happen and keep us safe. Um, and so, I mean, this is space flight. Um, things that you don't expect occur. Um, there is danger and uh, stuff that you never could have imagined happens, like losing all the coolant on a Soyuz uh, due to a late MMOD strike. And it's not to say that's not imaginable, that's completely imaginable, uh, but it really does happen. So these low probability events really do occur. And I think uh, our teams here uh, around the world at the Mission Control Centers and uh, all our engineers do an admirable job of dealing with those things when they come up. Anything you'd like to add? Okay. Going on to the phone, we have Marcia Smith with Space Policy Online. Thanks so much. My question is for Andre, and it's back to the spacewalk question. I'm wondering, since uh, there were a number of Russian spacewalks that had to be canceled, I'm wondering how many are going to be taking place while you're up there, and are you expecting an opportunity to be on one of those spacewalks yourself? And also, do you know if there are any plans, once you do resume spacewalks, to check to see if there's any residual contamination from the propellant around the airlock? Ну, на самом деле, да, действительно это так. Значит, много выходов было отменено, и основная их часть, которая была запланирована в том числе и на экспедицию 69 с Каноненко, с Чубом и Охарой, на этот экипаж МС-23 корабля, они будут перенесены ну, туда ближе к апрелю, я так полагаю. That is correct. A number of EVAs has been cancelled, uh, and uh, some of the EVAs which were initially scheduled uh, for the 69 Soyuz crew, Oleg Kononenko, uh, Nikolai Chub, and uh, Laurel O'Hara, they will be uh, moved uh, to a later date, sometimes in April, I guess, and that's uh, MS-23 uh, crew initially. Конкретно для меня, на мой полет выходов в открытый космос не планировалось. Вот. Моя задача главная будет состоять в поддержке или в обеспечении этих выходов при помощи аэроподизированной руки европейской. For me personally, no EVAs were planned uh, for my flight, uh, but I will be supporting EVAs uh, using the European robotic arm. Вот. И второй вопрос, напомните, пожалуйста. And uh, could you please remind me uh, the second question that you asked? 
So I uh, don't think we have them on the phone okay. bridge anymore. <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, ah. Ну, вот это я не знаю, так как мне не ставили задачу э, выхода в открытый космос, поэтому и у нас очень часто задачи в открытый космос от одного выхода к выходу сейчас могут меняться, вот, поэтому может быть что-то такое будет, а может быть нет, я не могу точно сказать. It's hard for me to answer this question right now uh, since no EVAs were originally planned for me, but uh, EVA plans and programs are changed um, uh, sometimes. Uh, so for now, I don't uh, know if anything is planned like that, but this might change. So since we're speaking of spacewalks, we have a couple of questions from social media about them. Um, and John Neal would like to know um, how many you anticipate, if any, and then B would like to ask if any of those spacewalks involve the IROSAs. Uh, the answer is, well, the answer to the second question is yes. So um, during the later part of our mission, as Steve mentioned, we're expecting the SpaceX 28 cargo vehicle to come up and visit us starting around June. And uh, in the trunk of that vehicle, there will be two IROSAs. Our, uh, ISS rollout solar arrays. Um, and so as many of you know, we're undergoing a kind of long-term effort right now to upgrade the solar arrays on space station. And we're maybe midway through that process. And so um, actually the crew on board right now has been working on the one, the uh, mod kits for the one alpha ch uh, power channel. Um, the mod kit for the one Bravo power channel is already in, case, in place, and so those mod kits uh, allow us, uh, hopefully, to go out the door and install those uh, new IROSA solar arrays. I think we were planning two right now with maybe a third as a contingency, but I, I'm hearing it, it might become three because it is quite a bit of work, and we also have some additional work to do beyond the solar arrays, so. Thanks, Woody. Um, we're gonna go back to the phone bridge with Marvin Marshall with the Nighttime News Space Report. Hi, my name is Marvin Marshall from the Nighttime News at Space Support on Twitch.tv. It's a pleasure to be able to talk to all four of you. So excited uh, to see you all go up to the, the station here very soon. Um, now I've got a question, uh, you know, for, for all four of you guys, if that's okay. Uh, you know, what personal or fun items are you excited to bring up with you uh, when you, you, you know, uh, when you get up there? And, and when you look out the window, uh, what, what is that first thing that you, you know, you're going to be looking for? Uh, when you get up there. And again, thank you guys again for taking taking our question. You have an awesome flight aboard Dragon and Falcon, and we'll hopefully talk to you guys in lower orbit soon. All right, I guess I'll start. Um, <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to be most excited watching you guys look out the window for the first <laughs> time. Um, first time you get to float, First, it's just going to be so much fun. I'm just hoping my body retains the memory from, you know, 12 years ago so I can enjoy it properly. But... Uh, um, yeah, as far as personal items I'm bringing up to enjoy and play with on orbit, I really can't think of anything uh, specific that I'm bringing, but uh, it, there's just so much to do up there when you have a spare opportunity, looking out the window, just floating. Floating never gets old. It's a good way to break up your day. Um, so I, I guess I'll pass it on to you guys. Yeah, I'm deeply looking forward to that first look out the cupola. Um, I'm, who knows where we'll be yeah. in terms of our orbital past, but whatever it is, I'm excited to, to see it for the first time. Um, and then in terms of personal items, mine's uh, simple. Unfortunately, over the summer, I, um, I lost my father, and uh, so I'm just bringing a, a photo of him that means a lot to me. And uh, I wish he could come along with me, but uh, at least I'll, I'll, well, I will be bringing him along yeah. with me. So. Well, um, we all uh, get the chance to take a lot of items. I have a lot of items that I'm going to take, but um, specifically uh, uh, I'm taking a, a, a jiu-jitsu kimono. I'm still looking for a, a victim to train with. I, I, I won't call the name. Yeah, not victim, partner maybe. And uh, yeah, that's uh, one cool item I'm looking for. I'm also taking some uh, small 1010 uh, uh, rockets from uh, the old uh, adventure of 1010. And uh, looking down uh, to Earth, I have a plan to probably see it with a camera. So I want to share that first moment with everyone. Hopefully it will work. So I'll try to prevent myself to go there alone before taking a camera with me and share the moment with everyone. That's good. Uh, no. 
Конечно же, безусловно, мне хочется скорее уже приступить к этому делу, попасть на станцию и увидеть нашу планету с высоты 400 километров. I'm really looking forward to this moment when I finally arrive to the International Space Station and I can look down on Earth uh, from the altitude of 400 kilometers. Ну, а из личных вещей я тоже взял очень много, очень много разных небольших вещей. Ну, это фотографии близких, родных, это различные детские рисунки, какие-то другие подарочные вещи, которые различные значки, медали, которые я потом смогу после полета раздарить своим друзьям, близким, знакомым. And uh, in terms of personal items, I took a lot of small items, uh, like photos of my uh, relatives, uh, kids' drawings, uh, different small souvenirs, medals, pins, that I would be able to share uh, and to give to my friends and family. So going back to the phone bridge, we have Manuel Mazanti with Exploration Espacial. Thank you. How are you? Maybe a question for um, Commander Baldwin or, or the rest of the crew as well. Given what happened with Soyuz and all the, the logistics going on uh, to see how to resolve a, a potential emergency, I wonder if having extra Crew Dragon seats and suits on board the station was ever considered. I know they're custom made uh, for each astronaut by maybe having average sizes of uh, uh, seats and suits can be implemented was some was was ever discussed well you know since this uh, event happened in december uh, we've been pretty much totally involved in training and haven't had an opportunity to be a part of the discussions as to what things that they've considered i'm sure they have considered all those options uh, you know the spacex suits as we all know uh, they're very very personalized uh, they, they really do fit you uh, very precisely so you know, I'm sure that was a consideration when they were looking at how to make this work uh, for any of these contingencies coming going forward. I do think that this is a great example. You know, I've seen it uh, real time when things go wrong on board station, whether it be, you know, losing a tool bag, having a camera on the, uh, the space shuttle's arm get twisted around. You know, NASA and the space agencies now, yeah, really across the board, uh, coming together and getting to a solution you know, now with our commercial partners as well. It's really amazing to see how innovative people can be in extremely difficult engineering uh, positions. You know, these vehicles are all designed and built and they're already up there. Now you have to find a solution to, to solve this problem with the uh, what you've been given. You can't necessarily provide anything new. And those challenges, those engineering challenges are uh, absolutely amazing to watch people solve. And it's been incredibly exciting this time. I, I think we've got to a, a good solution so far. Uh, but, you know, looking past back at the history, it's it's just uh, one of the really exciting reasons to be here. It's just amazing absolutely. to watch people solve problems. So. Thank you, Steve. I just wanted to do a quick check. Do we have any questions in the room? Lenka, go ahead. Thank you, Sputnik News again. Just uh, what is the biggest uh, challenge for each of you? Uh, you know, it's very unique opportunity. So any of you, do you have like some challenges you are afraid of or are you just not, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I always say that, you know, once you get on the launch pad and you get yourself strapped in, uh, my biggest concern, my biggest fear is, am I actually capable of performing the mission they've asked me to perform? You know, I... Uh, uh, and, and that goes doubly this time because I've never been in the, you know, the uh, station, space station for six months, and that challenge is really the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, and uh, seeing how I perform, seeing how I come through that, uh, that I think is my biggest concern and my challenge because I know these guys can handle anything, uh, so that's my personal challenge. Yeah, I think as a first-time flyer, there's a certain component of uncertainty that's hard to remove. Uh, the training's been incredible, and so I feel prepared, but I also know that I'm uh, flying into uh, something completely unknown, and I think that just by definition brings uh, interesting challenges. Yeah, I think uh, reaching this level is definitely um, a moment 
when you feel uh, confident. We, well, thanks to the training and the proper uh, uh, knowledge gain that we get, uh, I think we're ready. I, I won't call it uh, fear, but I would call it uh, respect. I heard this word from uh, a fellow astronaut. He said, we need to respect the machine that we're handling. So we have a lot of respect um, uh, for, the, for the rocket, for the capsule uh, station overall. And in case of an emergency, I think we are really equipped with the proper uh, response. We have procedures that we can run. We have a memorized uh, response, responses that we can uh, conduct. So uh, in, in that regard, uh, I won't call it uh, fear. Uh, we're ready for it. Uh, in terms of uh, the most difficult thing, I think uh, uh, six months is a long duration. And uh, probably the most uh, difficult thing is staying away from family. Uh, hopefully we can we can uh, keep that connection uh, with our beloved ones, and uh, again share uh, the the daily routine that we're having and uh, keep that uh, bond uh, uh, throughout the six uh, six months mission. So yeah, to me that that is the most difficult thing probably. Ну для меня наверное самое сложное это в принципе то же самое все. Во-первых, это после старта и прибытия на станцию, это привыкнуть к невесомости, то есть понять свой организм, как он будет адаптироваться к условиям невесомости. Well, uh, for me, I think some of the aspects uh, are the same, and also after launch, uh, to get used to the weightlessness, to see how my body will react to microgravity. Ну, затем, соответственно, после посадки привыкнуть обратно к земной гравитации, то есть организм опять будет заново привыкать жить на земле. And then after landing to get used to living on Earth again, so my body will be adjusting or readjusting to gravity again. И вот это вот меня, конечно, беспокоит. Ну и, естественно, самое главное в процессе всего полета мы, конечно же, не можем подвести всех тех людей, кто помогал нам и готовиться, кто помогал готовиться нам именно как наши инструктора, те, кто помогает, те, кто производит космическую технику, то есть всех инженеров, ученых, те, кто готовит научные эксперименты, как бы не можем их подвести, наша главная задача это выполнять свою работу хорошо. And of course, during uh, the actual flight, it's very important that we meet the expectations of uh, all the people who work tirelessly on the ground, all the scientists and engineers, and perform all the experiments very well. So we have Will Robinson-Smith with Spectrum News 13 in Orlando on the phone. Yes, hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, Apologies if this has already been asked, uh, joining the, the call late, but uh, to each of the crew members, is there a particular memento or, or strength that reminds you of, of home on Earth that you're bringing up with you? And if you could speak to uh, why you wanted to bring that memento up with you. Um, and if that's already been asked, uh, if you could speak to maybe some of the, the science that you're looking forward to operating on station. Thanks. So we did go over the items. Um, this will be available for playback on NASA's YouTube account. But did you guys want to talk science? You know, I, as I said earlier, we've got hundreds of experiments, uh, you know, on each of these flights continuously going on on board station. And so every new visiting vehicle is going to bring uh, many more opportunities. Some of them are more, uh, you know, more astronaut intensive than others. And obviously the, the ones, the medical experiments that we are also uh, subjects of, uh, those are probably the closest ones to, to heart. But I usually am I'm looking forward to uh, sort of generically, I'm always very interested in the material science processes that we're looking at on board station and those experiments as well. But uh, it's, we have so much science and we've been, you know, just in the past few weeks, we've had so many briefings on things that we're going to be doing. I feel a little bit saturated right now. <laughs> you guys got any particular ones you're thinking of? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we will be doing a lot of science. Um, uh, I recall, for example, um, uh, some science on the fluidics and how they react or um, uh, move in space. And uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, combustion uh, experiments that we'll be uh, monitoring as well, uh, various types of uh, 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 combustion. And we, we, say that we see the flammability on, the, on these uh, uh, 
uh, elements. Uh, this is for the safety of the, of the crew uh, when we go beyond low Earth orbit, going to, to, to the moon and, and, and beyond. Um, it's another uh, test of uh, flammability. And uh, we have, as you mentioned, Steve, and I, I do mention as well, um, we will be subjects to a lot of uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, observation that is uh, done before the flight, during the flight, and post-flight to see the impact of uh, weightlessness on our, on our bodies, on our uh, body mass. So it's all for the sake of science, and uh, it's all for the uh, sake of uh, the, uh, the push towards uh, uh, the boundaries of exploration towards space. So. I'm excited to do to run all these experiments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's just amazing what the ISS platform can accomplish. So it's everything from fundamental scientific research to looking back at Earth, uh, monitoring, you know, Earth's atmosphere and the climate system, and uh, just studying our own home planet, to innovation. So, like the unique weightless environment on ISS allows us to look at things like novel protein folding that's only possible in weightlessness, or constructing uh, microstructures that can't even hold up their own weight and can only be constructed in that environment. And then, just like Sultan mentioned, something I'm passionate about is I think our 22-year history on ISS has given us enormous value for thinking about how we go forward with Artemis to the moon. And so, you know, Sultan so mentioned the combustion experiment. In weightlessness, buoyancy-driven convection uh, is not a thing, and so uh, things burn differently. And, I mean, if you really think about things like vehicle design, we're often constrained both in how we design our vehicles and how we operate our vehicles by flammability requirements. So uh, studies like the one Sultan mentioned are enormously important for uh, enable us, enabling us to push the envelope in the future a bit more on what we can do with our vehicles. Um, another one that we're actually, that I'm excited about is we're gonna uh, potentially, if we do some EVAs, we may take some swabs outside, <laughs> some EVA capable swabs, yeah. and actually swab the outside of the space station to try to get a sense of uh, what sorts of um, like biological material might be out on the outside of space station. Um, and that's relevant for planetary protection when we think about going to Mars. Um, so we're starting to get ahead on thinking about those things and how they impact our future missions. So I have a question from social media here. Um, it's for, from Angel on Twitter for Sultan Alniani. Um, so you'll be the first Arab to go on a long duration space mission. Uh, will you be spending Ramadan in space? Are you the first? And what are your thoughts on it? Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, six months, uh, long duration, uh, first Arab mission. Uh, I think uh, it's a great privilege, yet it's a great responsibility. Uh, throughout the six months, we will be uh, passing through uh, uh, very um, uh, like nice occasions like the Eids, at the end of Ramadan, and the end of the pilgrim. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm in the uh, like a definition of a traveler, and um, we can actually break fast. It's not uh, compulsory, and actually fasting is not uh, uh, compulsory if you're uh, uh, like uh, feeling uh, not well. So in that regard, anything that can jeopardize the mission or maybe put the crew member in a risk, uh, we're actually allowed to, to eat sufficient food and to prevent any uh, escalation of lack of food or nut uh, nutrition or, or hydration. So in that regard, uh, we were safe. Um, if we had the opportunity, definitely Ramadan is a, is a good occasion to uh, fast and uh, it's actually healthy and uh, probably share some uh, UAE meals with you guys. Uh, but yeah, definitely, we're, we'll wait and see how, how it goes. We're excited to hear all about it. Um, so we have one on the phone, Marsha Dunn with Associated Press. Yes, hi again. Uh, for Steve, I'm, I'm wondering, because of the Soyuz leak issue, you're going to be working alongside three guys for much longer than you anticipated. <laughs> and and is that, are there any complications with this switch in your crewmates, any workarounds needed? And are you taking up anything for Frank and his two Soyuz partners, like extra clothes or special food to cater to them, since they're going to be up there a lot longer than they anticipated? Thanks. Uh, they, they have already anticipated, you know, uh, what they'll need for the, for the extended duration of their mission. They'll be taking care of that. You know, we're just uh, that cargo. They'll take handle several. They haven't 
necessarily briefed us as to what they're going to do. As far as operating with uh, this crew, we were scheduled to operate with this crew for over a month already, and this just extends it. Uh, you know, it's changed uh, our expectations for who our colleagues are going to be on orbit for the duration of our mission, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there will be great, a great crew to work with as well. As I said, we anticipated working with them before, so uh, no real changes that I anticipate uh, Going forward, I, I think uh, I think you know we'll just continue to, to work on the mission. They just have an opportunity to spend an extra six months on board. So we have time for about one more question. Is there any in the room? Yes, in the back. Um, please wait for a microphone to come to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Uh, is there anything that the crew would like to see accomplished? During mission, but also within the next 10 years of space exploration. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things I'd like to be see accomplished during our mission. The, everything that's scheduled, I really like my space flight nominal. So I would really like the schedule to go as, as published, and that would be incredibly exciting because the opportunity to have uh, both TFT, Axiom 2, and the three visiting cargo vehicles uh, would be absolutely amazing. So I'd think that would be uh, fantastic. As far as the next 10 years, I've, I've been here a long time, and I've got friends that have been here a lot longer than I have, and every one of them will tell you that this is the most exciting time they've ever been present at NASA. There's so much going on, you know, and it's not just Artemis and exploration on to the, back to the moon and on to Mars. It's, you know, this the development of low Earth orbit, the development of a commercial uh, space program. It's just so exciting. and. You guys all have thoughts on this. I'll, what do you got, Woody? Yeah, well, the second question's so easy. We're landing yeah. on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be incredible. Um, I mean, thinking about the space station, uh, so October 31st of 2000 <laughs> was the last day that all living humans were on Earth. And since then, we've continuously had a presence on ISS. And so we're just, um, you know, we're going to spend six months up there, and I think continuing that incredible legacy. It's just amazing how much we've learned in those 22 years about aboard the ISS, and it's an absolute privilege to get to be a part of that legacy uh, with our mission. And then, yeah, looking forward, I remember in college, I was an engineering student, and I remember thinking about internships and being a bit disappointed one day, like, I didn't get to work on Apollo. Those were the good <laughs> days. And I even, what was that? a little more than 10 years ago, I could not have, 15 years ago, I could not have imagined that 15 years later, we, I would be like around a program, Artemis, that uh, is gonna be sending people back to the moon in a sustainable way, setting up a continuous presence. And so I truly think we are living in the most exciting of times and we need lots of help. So uh, <laughs> to any young engineering students out there, uh, we really need your assistance uh, for the next decade of human spaceflight. Yeah. yeah, speaking about the UAE uh, uh, astronaut program, specifically uh, in 2017, it was uh, a new call for a participant to apply and fly to space. So I was lucky enough to be selected uh, among the first two, uh, Hazal Mansour and myself. And uh, in 2019, after a very successful mission, uh, when Hazar went to space. It was the opening uh, towards uh, uh, a continuous uh, uh, presence in space for, for the UAE. And it was actually a, a promise from our prime minister to continue these uh, uh, flights. So here we are today, we're talking about the second mission. Uh, we raised up the, the bar, now we're talking about six months. And uh, we have two additional astronauts actually uh, training with the, the new Ascan class. So. We are, we are looking uh, towards a uh, mission further in, in, into space, uh, looking uh, uh, to join Artemis, hopefully in the future. I would love to see a, a, a UA flag on, <laughs> on, on the lunar service, uh, uh, carried on the shoulder of, of, uh, of a UA astronaut. Uh, yes, I think the UA is doing a, a very good job, and uh, in the, the coming 10 years, I think, uh, will be uh, uh, following uh, the international efforts towards going to space and pushing the boundaries of exploration. Nothing yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that's all the time that we have. Um, so this concludes our press conference today. Thank you all for watching. If you didn't get the chance to ask your question, this crew is heading straight over to Instagram, the at <laughs> ISS account to answer even more questions. So if you didn't get a chance to, to ask it then, head over to at ISS and we're gonna get started in about 10 minutes. Um, you can keep up with the Crew 6 mission on social media and the CCP blog and make sure to watch their launch on NASA TV and on your NASA app. Well, go, go Crew 6. Go Crew 6. Thanks. <laughs> Crew 6. Thanks, everybody, for coming.